Hi, my name is Ronald, and with my partner in crime, Gaurav, we are the co-hosts of the FinTech and Web3 Founders podcast hosted by CFT. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. We have an awesome speaker. Uh, we were just chatting, Rahul and myself, yesterday. So it's wonderful to have him back again for our formal podcast. Rahul, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Ronit. Uh, hi, Gaurav. Great to be here. Tell us, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Who is Rahul? Who is Rahul Banerjee? Um, so Rahul, uh, as per my LinkedIn, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Bondi Value. But uh, a little bit like Gaurav, I've studied various things in life, started with engineering, did finance, did my doctorate in, uh, in trust, uh, but live in Singapore, uh, sold soap and made tea at the start of my career for Unilever. Uh, uh, so, you know, did my first entrepreneurship in surf laundry service. So I've actually washed clothes. So I'm the, you know, perfect husband can make tea, soap, uh, wash clothes, and then became a banker. So I've been a fixed income banker for the better part of uh, 20 years. Live here in Singapore, two daughters, the older one, works for a different fintech, refused to join my company. And I said, that cuts both ways. The younger one's in uh, in high school. You spent 20 years uh, plus in bonds, fixed income and in finance. A really basic and potentially very dumb question. What is a bond? Uh, a bond is a loan that you, that an individual can give to a company, right? If you go and lend your neighborhood shop a hundred dirhams or a hundred sterling, he mm. pays you 5% interest for two years and gives you money back. That's a loan. Make it bigger, make it a larger institutional, it's a bond. But the big feature, the difference between a bond and a loan is mm. not only size, is that a, a bond is a tradable instrument, right? Mm. Or everyone that as you guys know, if I buy a bond of Saudi Aramco or HSBC, right? I can sell that bond to Ronit or Gaurav without the permission of the issuer. So it becomes a tradable security or a marketable security. Mm. So I'll just pause that, but it's a very simple instrument. It's actually a, a instrument where your rate of interest, the dates you get it back, mm. and when you get your money back is all, all that you really need to know. So a bond, it's a credit instrument, i.e. money, yeah. a lender, transfers money, funds to a borrower, who then repays it over a certain period of time with a coupon or interest rate. Yeah. And it's a, quote unquote, in air quotes, a public instrument, not just a That's bilateral right. instrument. That's right. And when did bonds start? When can you sort of define the, you know, loans credit has yeah. been around forever. In fact, yeah. it's argued that credit predates coins because yeah. money originally was credit or debt. Um, I needed money. Um, Rahul, you gave me basically an advance yeah. because yeah. I didn't have a coin to give you um, or in the last of housing years, a note to give you. Um, you gave me credit for the, the debt. And so this is a super old, but like, yeah, go back to the dawn of recorded civilization. But when, when is the bond, when is the bond up here? Sure. Uh, and, and I agree, you know, the way uh, you describe credit, it is as old as religion, because if you go back to all religions, mm. they have instructions about, can you charge mm. interest? Can yeah. you ch overcharge interest? You know, literature yeah. talks what about first? Organized right? religion or credit? <laughs> I guess but, credit, right? Because if organized religion refers to credit, yeah. Without being um, any way disrespectful to... We yeah. don't do religion on this podcast. <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm saying it, it is as old, you know. And as long as you, you know, have temporal differences between production mm -hmm. and consumption. Mm -hmm. If your crops come once a year, yeah. right, but you consume throughout, then you will yeah. need some 
means of balancing those temporal differences between production and consumption. Mm -hmm. And that necessitated credit. Okay. It still does. Yeah. The first bond banking. actually... Definition of credit and banking is basically maturity mismatch. Or right. Yeah. Maturity uh, transformation, I think, is the technical term. Yes. You know, lots of bond banks have become insolvent in the last few weeks of matching versus mismatching is uh, is is the problem. But I forgot banking. Never mind. <laughs> but I have an exact date for you, right? Uh, Here we go. Write it down, folks. Get your pens out. Your so iPad the bond out. market started in November sixteen hundred and twenty-three. So we are very close, and I'll I'll throw a party you. Everyone's invited for the 400th anniversary of uh, the bond market. November 7th, I think. November 7th. Well, that's yeah. all coming to Singapore, right? You Yes. You've and got the and rooftop booked out of that, whatever that fancy hotel is with the, uh, the Marina boat. Bay Sands. Yes. That's Marina it, Bay yeah. Sands. And that'll be quite nice for another reason that some of the bonds, the bonds were issued by the Dutch. Uh, uh, East India Company, mm -hmm. right? Which also issued one of the first shares, but yes. it was sold to a place which you can see from the rooftop of the Marina Bay Sands, mm -hmm. which is the island of Batam in Indonesia. Batam, uh, right? So, so, so this this instrument uh, and this book has has a story, the monetary history of of, of, of Singapore, money in Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. And part of the story. Uh, or, you know, is all around how at that point you had uh, money with intrinsic value, which is coins, which made out of gold mm -hmm. and silver. And a war in Europe caused a lot of the coins to flow out of this part, which is a big trading hub. The Arabs, the Indians, the Chinese, the Indonesians, everyone traded here. Money started to flow. So at that point, money supply constraint mm -hmm. would cause trade to cease. And they said, okay, this piece of paper, a tradable instrument, and hence you see it needed to be tradable, is redeemable two years later in Amsterdam for so many florins, which is pegged to the gold. Mm. So that's how the whole aspect of tradability mm. freely is intrinsically linked to the birth of bond market. Uh, you know, it becomes a tradable instrument. Uh, now I can buy your silk and get this, no this bond for it. Obviously, mm. the Dutch company raised some funding, which, you know, traders always needed. So it's all linked, but it is 400 years old. And mm. through economic cycles, through crisis, its bonds have been used to raise money for wars. It is one of those things that Newton got wrong, uh, right? So, so noblemen uh, would lend Wait, money pause to there, the pause there. What do you mean? One of the things Newton got wrong. Just it's sort of it, that you know, like, there was a there was a sorry. Uh, maybe one day I'll write an article about it. But basically, <laughs> Newton. We do it had now, some, forget the article. We do it now. I think I think Newton had some good bonds of uh, good companies. Yeah. And he sold them to buy uh, undiversified uh, stock into one of the the big uh, debacles, uh, big- Oh, the South Sea bubble. Yes, so so that's that's what he did. Yeah, so it's Southie. perhaps his only mistake. Uh, and he was a terrible, sorry, not, not terrible. He was um, initially a good investor, but he yeah. had he had FOMO. Yeah, especially when he, that's why he switched out of bonds to stock. Yeah, because he was right. in some of these hot stocks of stock. Yeah. And he cashed out his profits, then his- much less intelligent friends who were like basically all his friends because he was yeah. mutual. <laughs> all his less intelligent friends basically piled in after he sold. Then yeah. they whatever ten x their money and then Newton got FOMO. Yeah. So there's a moral of that story there somewhere. Like when uh, we're going to get knocks on the door from the History Channel. You guys are amazing. This is fantastic. Right. I'm loving this. And then like when Gara sells and then I buy and then Gara buys again because like this yeah. so and so is now making money. <laughs> so he doesn't understand. Yeah. Lock in uh, your profits, Garo. Lock in your profits. I... Dance like an Egyptian. <laughs> so, 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 so that's that's history. That's how yeah. that's how it's it's 1623. Started. Right. 16 that particular date in 1623. Yeah. And the interest rate uh, was around three odd percent. So not very different mm -hmm. from what it is today. 
and the hundred year cycle in the making. Fl Florence. 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 Right. Interesting. Interesting. And what makes that the first bond? Um, why wasn't there like a like in the Italian Renaissance? Why aren't there? Why, why didn't you say, oh, there was like something in Florence in the fifteen hundreds or Venice or? The first thing, Ronit, I want to say is maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there mm. was one. I don't have records for that. Mm. Uh, there is, there is, you know, I have in my office a lot of old bond certificates and mm. they're really pretty, right? Uh, and uh, my hobby I'm is... come and take pictures of those when I come to Singapore in two weeks' time. We need to take some selfies of those bond certificates. Sure. We, we, uh, happy to, happy to, right? Uh uh, the the big market where you can buy them is actually uh, London. Oh, London okay. has some of the best around St. Martin's Lane. You go buy, oh, okay. uh, buy these. Yeah. So we talked about bonds and, you know, this is a bond is a credit instrument. It's a public marketable. Let's call it a security for want of a better word. And the first one you can trace goes back to Dutch East Indy Company, which is obviously the birth of globalization as we know it today. Um, there's been international trade for centuries, millennia international trade. The modern globalization really started with those pesky European traders from the Netherlands and then Dutch 2.0, the Brits, right? Um, yeah. Let's fast forward to 2009, 2008. Yeah. So we're gonna flip from bonds to blockchain. Because sure. your company, as we talked about in the introduction, you're the founder, CEO of Bondi Value. Yeah. Bondi Value, for those who don't know, basically tries to reinvent the bond world, bond markets, using blockchain technology, DLT. So again, a definition question for you, Ralph. What is a blockchain? And how and why did you get interested in this technology? Um. Thanks. Very hard, very hard question, right, for me to answer. But let me let me start at a very simple level, right? Mm -hmm. All of us use Google Drives, right, uh, or Excel sheets, which we we can mm -hmm. read write on, yeah. right? So run it. We can play a game, or you, me, uh, we can actually lead our life as we can become friends, and yeah. we can start giving each other and taking each money from each other, and we can write it on this Google Drive. Yeah. I owe you. You owe me. Hmm. Now, the problem that is there is no agreed mechanism. You know, I will always write Ronit, you and Gaurav owe me money. Yeah. Right. So to have a record where people can read and write without a central authority hmm. is what led to this. And if you allow me to back up a bit in, sure. in the bond world, right. And I'll, and, and this is CFTE. So it is about web three yes so if you go back to the web one world of bonds and then i'll go to web two which we exist and then sort mm -hmm. of explain why web three is important back in the day from roughly 1623 all the way to the late 90s bonds were physical certificates mm -hmm. right so i had a physical took a certificate right, right a claim that I could mm -hmm. carry and I could sell it to Ronit Ghosh and you will give me some US dollars or rupees or sterling. Right. Right? right. That was the web one world. And where did you buy bonds in the web one world? You bought it at post offices, bank right. counters, etc. Yeah. My dad was an Air Force officer. He bought national savings certificates for cash, put it in the Godrej Steel Almira. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and you know, it did not have anyone's name written on it. It was a yeah. better instrument. Yeah. But then central securities depositories came and yeah. said, now we will electronically in the grand dematerialize them. Dematerialization, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll dematerialize them. And most of it happens at the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is selected as the, yeah. as the master ledger. But then that started to create problems, you know, yeah. how do I get, you know, 2% coupon on a thousand dollar bond? That's $20 yeah. paid twice a year, so $10. Yeah. The money transfer costs me, you know, $100. Settlement risk, I'm buying a bond in Singapore from you in mm -hmm. Dubai, you know, how do we settle? So that bond market, the bond market, you know, was always the 
preview of the barons, you know, mm. that's, uh, that's why the minimum denomination is 200,000 US dollars. So what blockchain can do mm. is allow me to buy a bond from you run it or sell Gaurav to you at a thousand dollar denom without the need of a central intermediary to keep the ledger. Mm. Right. So we go back in a technology way. We meet in the Internet and I give you the bond, you give me the cash and we don't mm. take settlement risk on each other. So the simultaneous exchange of money and value, the bond mm. certificate can mm. happen in a riskless manner. So, so that's that, that's what we do, please. In a web 1.0, not even a web world, in a pre-web world, in a pre-internet yeah. world, bonds were physical yes. bearer instruments, right? Yes. By definition, yes. a bond was a bearer instrument. Um, Give me one sec. I will just bring those bond certs. Hold on. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Excellent. So the History Channel has now converted into show and tell. I'm loving the evolution of this podcast, Ronit. I mean, we, 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 there's never a dull moment. It doesn't Never, man, standing. never, man. Staying fluid, <laughs> conversations are there, learning about the history. It's I know. now we're show and this, tell. There's we're going to rebrand this to the YouTube history channel. Yeah, financial you know, history. Anyway, I feel we've got to break news. up this episode into NFTs and sell it as yeah. educational <laughs> material. Right. right. Anyway, it's locked up in the drawer of a chap who's not come in today. So we'll wait till ah. it comes. Right. Uh, uh, sorry about we'll, that. We'll take the selfies when I'm over. Yeah. So, but it was, yes, it was a physical certificate. Yeah, right? it was a physical certificate. Yeah. Right. It had issuer name, yep. coupon, where you can redeem for how much written on it. So there mm -hmm. was, and they use very, the reason I like also to buy them, they're very beautiful pieces so that they can't mm -hmm. easily be copied. So with seals, monograms, cursive writing, yeah. very thick paper that does not mm -hmm. easily get destroyed. Mm -hmm. So that was the web one. Please carry on. Right. So that was, or even web zero, right? Because yeah. before yeah. the internet, so web zero, or web whatever, yeah. minus one, web one, minus one. And so these bonds are floating around for the last 400 years or so in somewhat the same format, uh, though the, obviously the language changes and the, so on. But it's, but some of this language as we've discussed before and Gara, don't panic, but there's a religious comment coming up, but some of the language is biblical, right? I yep. mean, covenants and like it's, money is about faith. Yeah, covenant, right? Yeah. I covenant that I will do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, bond covenants, uh, yeah. indenture. Yeah. Right now, in the Web two world, Web one world, we moved away from these physical bearer assets yeah. into something that's dematerialized and ironically harder for quote unquote ordinary people to access. Now, why is why is it? Why do we need? Why do we need blockchain technology to solve this problem? Why can we not? I mean, in a world of fintechs and all kinds of, you know, yeah. APIs and I can, yeah. my kid who's just turning nine next week has a physical and a virtual card, yeah. debit card, a prepaid debit card. Yeah. He can go and yeah. pay that, you know, he can pay whatever it is yeah. for his pizza in the shop in Dubai. Yeah. And that was all set up online virtually um and it's done through apis and open banking because it obviously got permission by my my bank account even though i'm not connected i don't have an account to this fintech but they basically transferred money from my large international bank account yes my account's not large the bank is large just to be yes. clear um and this is all done and so this little kid of mine is running around with this card which he's like only used once to buy me coffee but he's like yeah. but he's got it right back in our day we still have like you know passbooks like this right we'd walk in and we'd hand it over across the counter that something scribbled down in the and we moved on to and it's just so easy in this world of open finance uh api why why do we need blockchain to solve this problem of access and liquidity yeah in the world of bonds why can't we do this some, somewhere else why is this kind of complicated slightly mystical technology uh, ron it uh great great question right uh now when we started bond bondy values birth predates 
the this blockchain fad. Okay. Right. So we were founded in 2016. Mm -hmm. Right. And my co-founder, he's also my classmate from business school, Raja Ram Kanan. Right. We have a fintech and the way we've agreed is fintech has seven letters, three for finance, fin, four for yeah. tech. So yeah. tech dominates. Mm -hmm. But both of us had a very transparent uh, conversation lasting six months. Should mm -hmm. we use digital ledger technology mm -hmm. or should we use, you know, central ledgers? Yeah. Right. So now there are a couple of things that only a couple of things that blockchain is really good at. Okay. Right. Barring the hype and the barring the fact that it made right. a lot of people a lot of money. So yeah, I lost a lot of people a lot of money. Uh, yes. Uh, but yeah. the distribution was skewed. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's not, that's for another day. So now yeah. uh, if we look at cash and payments and God of, you know, yeah. a lot more about that than I will claim uh, to know, right. This whole thing about uh, virtual accounts yeah. right segregated cash mm. right is super well established and it's been developed and perfected mm. right visa your bank payment wallet everyone knows how much i have rahul has mm. the minute i touch it to these age-old institutions in luxembourg mm. and i say uh hey uh do i have a bond so my bank tells me yes rahul you have a bond of tata steel yeah. I go to the bank, bank goes to their custodian, custodian goes to someone else. And at every stage, it's what is called an omnibus account. That mm. the top matryoshka doll only knows the next level of the matryoshka doll. Yeah. Right. And that has risk and that has a issue. Mm. So if I have to, so when we do a bond, I did bonds all my life. You do a mm. $5 billion bond, you have only 130 people buying it because they are custodians and sub custodians. The final beneficial owners are, you know, 200,000 people, but only the top level of Matryoshka, the Matryoshka recognizes 100. So that causes layers, layers causes inefficiency. It's a high seas product. You know, people from all over the world get together to buy this $5 billion World Bank bond. And you need efficient ledgers which are not in control of anyone. Mm. Go back to that read write that, you know. So in our case, our ledgers are permissioned, but we with our bankers and custodians, we together run this super efficient ledger where everyone knows who holds what. Mm. So that is the, the, the use case. The second use case is also important. And again, perhaps very important in fixed income, because mm. bonds don't settle instantly, mm. right? If I buy a bond, you sell it, our trade will settle two days later. Mm. So we are both taking risk on each other. What if right. you don't, right? what if you're not there, mm. right? If that happens, that poisons trust, that poisons the development mm. of market. Yeah. And the world we've reached is the small man can't buy a bond mm -hmm. because even though he's willing to pre-fund mm -hmm. nobody wants to do a credit approval on him mm -hmm. right so that's why the bond market has not developed as well as the equity market where central exchanges take care of everything mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's fragmented globally mm -hmm. it's a problem the, the the basic problem that bond value is trying to solve is allowing mm -hmm. everyone in the world to buy efficiently the largest asset class. Got it, got it. I have so many more questions I'd love to ask you, Rahul, but I want to get Garav into the conversation to dig into bond value as a company. Sure. And also to dig into your entrepreneurial journey, what it was like after so many decades, a couple of decades, not so many, in yeah. traditional finance and big institutions and then setting sail on this, you know, voyage of adventure and discovery yeah. and so on. So Gaurav, over to you, my friend. Thank you so much, Ronip. It's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a historical lesson. It's been an entertaining conversation. It's been show and tell up until this point. I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dilute things by, 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 by going into a different direction, but let's try and keep it as entertaining as, as, as possible and informative. Rahul. 
you know, touching on what Ronit said, you know, you told us about the Unilever piece, you told us about, you know, moving into a space where, you know, you went into the banking world effectively, and then you've, you've moved into what is, what is Bondi, where you had a six month discussion and, and, you know, lo and behold, this is where you started and the company started in 2016. Seven years in, in, you know, the blockchain world is, is the equivalent to, you know, how we look at things as, as almost like dog years without trying to be derogatory, right? If you've been if you've been in the in this space for seven years, it's you're way ahead of the curve is what the assumption is, to, technically speaking. How did Bondi first start, and what is it today now? And and tell us about your journey there as well, because when you start, it sounds like there was just two of you, you know, and then you've got to build on the technology, and you have to choose a piece of technology, and you have to stick with it, and you have to keep building upon it, and then you have to go and get customers <laughs> to to pay for it, right? Walk us through the start of Bondi from a perspective of your journey in building that space and where it is today. Just take us, walk us through that. Um, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. You make me go back into, you know, 2016. But I think the story really begins more in the early 2000s, right? So if I, as I started working in a very big bank uh, list, you know, which has a uh, letter C at the beginning, right? Uh, in Asia, in the early 2000s, the total bond volume of new issuances was $4 billion. And now it's more like 400 billion. Wow. But the technology never changed. It was still the same uh, keyboard with many colors on it and a very expensive phone system with headsets. Yeah. So the market became 100 times, nothing changed. But one thing happened is as the market developed, a lot of individual investors were very badly served. So after doing bond issuances for many years, one day I decided to buy a bond myself. So I called my, my own bank, the consumer bank, and they quoted me a price that was two and a half percentage points, worse than what I was selling it on my desk to others. I'm like, dude, I'm calling from 18 floors above you, right? And he's like, yeah, so that's the price for you, right? Wow. So I'm like, why does it have to be this much off? So it's $5,000 at 200K ticket size. And I said, there has to be a better way. So it started off not so much by trying to trade, but just by starting to be a information uh, service. I said, uh, I was 40. Uh, I was the global head of credit sales, uh, fixed income sales. Uh, and I was, I had risen to my level of incompetence. So I said, this is, you know, if, if my only job is to pay, promote and fire people, it's not fun. So I said, I'll go create a, a, a app. Right. When I realized there's no app that gives bond prices, I'll create an app and that'll be happiness. I'll make a lot not a lot will make some money. I'll be happy. I'll do public service. And you know, this is it. So this is before 2016 that you want no, to this is a 2016. No, that is right, when I right. created okay. the app. So the trading came later. And then as soon as I launched this app, it's called Bondi value. We've rebranded ourselves almost completely to bond blocks today. You see the t-shirt bond blocks, uh, because people call Bondi value Bondi and e bond and my marketing guy said, that's not good. So it's just yeah. bond blocks now, which is less, uh, so we started as information service, right? We got off to a great start. A lot of people came and then one or people started coming to us and saying, Rahul, you've actually made our misery more acute. We knew we were getting ripped off. Now we know exactly how much we're getting ripped off. <laughs> so I said, so what do you want me to do? They said, set up a trading system. And I did not want to be a broker because a mm. broker can is adversarial, serial, anyone English, good English here? Adverse, adversarial. Adversarial, thank you. Adversarial to you. So I said, I'll create an exchange, right? Now exchanges are what cities are named after. Every large city has an exchange. So I was a you know regular poor Bengali boy. And that's when technology, FinTech, the monetary authority, they created a sandbox. <clears throat> to experiment and they allowed us to be in the sandbox 
we got an exchange license and that's where that whole story of use blockchain and Northern Trust and Citibank who are our custodians, they came in, connected their ledgers and that's where technology started to solve a real world problem. So rather than buying and selling yourself as a, as a trader or a broker, as you say, you said, yeah. let me provide the platform for everyone and, to and perform that activity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because then exchanges are always trying to get efficiency. I think you're not also looking at the general population of erosion on margin expansion as well as you go yeah. one way or the other, right? Yeah. yeah. Your, your marketing dollars is to, to a B2B audience as opposed to a B2C yeah. audience necessarily yeah. Yeah. because that cost and competition amongst the audience is the marketplace you provide, right? So even if you look at a at a Unilever type of type yeah. of scenario, instead of yeah. you being Unilever itself that's producing or competing with PNG and everyone else, yeah. or, you know, sorry, other people, yeah. you would effectively just be the marketplace to host them. Yeah. Um and and and, and that's that's really the, the, the genesis. And more recently, uh Yora, we've allowed individuals to also onboard. Oh wow. Right, because you know, a lot of individuals said, "Why do you, why do I need to pay f so many layers of fees?" And technology makes it possible. To... So let's let's pause on that for a moment. Sorry, Rao, just because there's there's so many moving parts to this as a business creation yeah. that you yeah. have to do. Right, there's compliance, there's regulation, there's KYC for people, for businesses, new players, existing players, access, flow of funds. You know, there's so many moving parts to this, right? How many people did you start with uh, when you started what is now Bond Blocks and how many today? So every business starts off with typically one. So we started one and there's a gentleman who's sitting right here uh, called Abel Koo. The day he joined, we became a company from a sole proprietorship. <laughs> and and he's, he's still there. Uh, he heads our, uh, he's headed many things, but he heads our operations mm -hmm. today we have 50 people across uh, india uh, singapore and mexico oh wow that's very interesting you're trying to cover all time zones is that the the idea was it just where the markets were looking um, for evolution of I, I think i think you know there's a lot of uh serendipity there's a lot of you know uh in in how businesses grow so the so, head trader of HSBC wanted to start Bondi Value Mexico, and that's why we have a Mexico office. So that's very interesting, right? To 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 bring me on to my next question: How much of your business is planned product roadmap development and sales of expansion versus people finding you and saying, "I need to do this," and let's set it up? I think for us, uh, if if there's a function that we are bad in, it's marketing. We, 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 right. So, so there is a lot of serendipity. People say, Hey, so, so there are times people will come and say, Rahul, why have I not heard of you? I'm like, I'm sorry. It's a fire marketing guy. I said, We don't have one. Right. So, how do I? So, we've been nerdy, a little nerdy. It's taken a lot of time to get this, this thing in. Sorry to be mathematical, but you know, there's no closed form solution to finding a bond yield. Right. So you need servers, you need technology, you need speed. All of us in high school can calculate using solver a bond deal for one bond. But for eight million bonds, eight times a day with all holiday convention starts to get messy. So those technologies are, are not easy to, to get. And, you know, when large financial institutions invested in us in our last round, People like Mass Mutual, people like uh, Citibank, you know, it really helped our growth. So you were completely self-funded to start with, and then you started getting institutional investors on board. Yeah, you know, I had a reasonable banking career. So, you know, a lot of my bosses had even better careers than me. So I put in my money, you know, my bosses said, look, a lot of the people in the fixed income community even some who I didn't know, they came and said, we want to help you grow, take our money. Right? And that because that need is, is, is a challenge, is huge. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge taking on outside investment. You know, when yeah. you first start doing it, it's, it's yeah. a different path to operating your business, you know, operating metrics, audits, yeah. updates yeah. and expansion. It's, yeah. it's always a, a challenge. So how do you foresee your next growth coming? Is it purely geographical? Is it purely with just the onboarding? Because 
there's so much demand from either a business point of view or a consum- um, a, an individual point of view. What's taking up most of your time for building the next piece of where your growth is going to come to and return to investors? So uh, I think, you know, there are two parts and I fully agree that as long as I was self-funding it, it was more fun. But my first three investors were my ex-bosses and who said, Rahul, you cannot have fun alone. La. <laughs> right. So they, they priced it, they structured it, they got lawyers to do it. So so it was it was there. And uh, this gentleman called Anant Venkat, uh, who was, you know, instrumental, super, super nice guy, super big fan. Today, we have compliance head, we PWCs, our auditor, Linklaters has been our lawyer from the very beginning. So, so we've got that. Bond markets are super hot today. People are coming from the Lehman crisis or GFC till last year, bonds did give very little yield. And today, you know, uh, bonds are bonds are super attractive. So we're getting that and we're scaling well because the technology infrastructure and our partners, the seven years of build ha- is, is certainly helping it uh, scale efficiently. Let's talk about the size of things just for our audience, maybe to have a bit of understanding of how big this really is. Yeah. When you first started, you know, Bondi Valley, which is now Bond Blocks, yeah. What was the, the volume or the value of bonds that were traded on your platform versus today? So zero. You know, when we started on, on day one, we did, had nothing. So there was no exchange. There was no volume. So you always start from, from, from zero. So today we have the ability to trade 8,000 bonds. So all the bonds you can think of, Tata's, HSBC, banks, Singapore Airlines, they can all trade. But the part of the business I really, really like, Gaurav, is the fractional part mm-hmm. that you can come in and buy a thousand dollar slice in a legally compliant proper structure of a, a, a bond let's say one of those tatas or hsbc bond and you can buy it electronically you can buy it at an institutional price okay and, right and there's what tens of billions of dollars worth of bonds that are available <laughs> from these eight thousand yeah. bonds there is you know you just the billion in the bond market is called a benchmark size. That's just one. So, you know, there are bond issuances that, uh, you know, are 5 billion for a single issuance, not all 8,000 together. It is a very big market. So if I, I want to buy Aramco, I could just jump on them. You could buy Aramco. Aramco, I think, is not available in fractional, but mm-hmm. it's available in full set. But yes, you can buy Aramco. And uh, the Aramco team was here in Singapore uh, two weeks ago as they are the lead sponsors of the women's golf, uh, the Aramco series. So I met with them and they're a very popular issuer, by the way. That's, uh, that's why I bring it up. It's very relevant for you know people in our ecosystem that yeah. are now getting into a space where bonds and public markets are sort of moving into a space where because of platforms like yourself, people are actually accessing it in... Yeah more in less traditional manners, uh, you know, so people can get educated, people can learn and people can access and buy fractional ownerships. So, you know, and Aramco is a very hot topic. Yeah. We have Emirates, MBD are listed. We are trying to do a whole Fantastic. series where of Sukuk only uh, uh, bonds and we are, sp- we are speaking with people on that. But there's societal benefits, Gaurav and Ranit, I want to, you know, you run Europe, we're head of fig research, right? So if, if, with your permission, I'll continue with the Aramco example. Please. Right. If people want to f- help Aramco, Aramco doesn't really need money, but it does, right? Uh, there are two ways. One is Aramco borrows from a bank. So let's call Rahul Small Buy Banerjee, right? So Rahul Small Buy Banerjee can put deposit to the bank and the bank can lend to Aramco and the bank has to set aside 20% uh, capital, mm-hmm. right? To, you know, pay for their bad potential losses. Or I can directly buy Aramco. And how the market develops is the spread is so much better, both for me and for Aramco in the direct access. So if you're large, international capital market brings societal benefits. So if you look at any economic, macroeconomic, public policy type, undergrad program, they try and explain how capital markets and formation really 
supercharges the growth of an economy. So just, you know, look at India, the, the prime minister and the reserve bank is saying, can I do one rupee, one bond? SEBI has done an amazing job in reducing denoms. The Thai government is saying one baht, one bond. Philippines is using this technology to democratize bond markets. So people are getting that we need to get to people being able to invest better. Just before I hand back to, to Ronan, just want to now talk about where you are today and where you're going next. Yeah. Right? Where do you see your company and the marketplace, generally speaking? Do you see a number of players rushing to this space and becoming very, very available in all sorts of markets? Or is it already very, very popular with other platforms trying to compete with you? What does that look like as an instance? And then what do you see for yourself? Where are you concentrating on? Or where do you see yourself in three years as from Bondi Blocks to Bond Blocks today yeah. in the next few years? Sure. Got many, many, many questions. Some with a lot of hope, some with trepidation. So let me... <laughs> so very genuinely, I feel that if Bond Blocks and me and my team if we can make the world a place where more people can buy bonds easily, efficiently, like they buy stocks, mm -hmm. that is in itself very satisfying. Right now, if we are a part of that ecosystem that suddenly explodes, so much happier. Right. But sometimes the person who is the pioneer may not be the most successful at the end. And that is fine. As long as that aim of vision that now bonds are for everyone is fulfilled right if you're successful a lot of copycats come and that is fine that is that everyone helps in creating that market so i do see a world where very soon you know and we're already seeing that that everyone who has access to hard currency will be efficiently be able to buy bonds second is as a different part of our business within the same company. I'm spending a lot of time with local governments, national governments, and helping them create clones of bond blocks for their countries where their citizens can buy their government bonds using technology. Hmm. Because the technology, you know, if think of the technology as a floppy drive, I can really give it at not a very expensive cost to people. I can actually you know, and it helps the local governments there. Yep. Uh, there was an Economist article which said every country needs a lager, a stock exchange, and a soccer team, right? And I'm just adding to that saying every government needs a bond market to buy their local bonds, right? Because there's no government going back unless you can raise money and you need a bond market. So every country in the world has a bond market and every country in the world has citizens who ultimately are the ones who buy those bonds. There's temporal differences between consumption, your stage of life and investment. So this has, this has deep things. And for us, for a lot of countries, we are very happy to practically give away the technology for free. Rahul, thank you so much for that. It's, it's been an interesting conversation. Uh, looking forward to having a follow-up conversation at some point yes. with you again. And uh, I'm jealous of Ronit going there and taking photos with those original documents. But out you'll there. be here on seventh, seventh November, right? Twenty-three. Well, yeah, well, yes. Now, I mean, and what yes. happens? Let's go. So, thank you again, and Ronit, back to you. Maybe a couple of final questions before we wrap up. Um, one is looking back, Ralph. When you started on the journey as an entrepreneur, as a business builder, what do you know now that if you had known then, you'd have said, whoa. What's been like some of the biggest surprises of building a business in general, and then all specifically in this kind of blockchain space? So what, what's kind of been the, sheesh, I had no idea it'd be like this. Um, Ronit, just time, right? Seven years, right? Yeah. Of doing the same thing. So that persistence. If a lot of people have come and said, Rahul, you've achieved so much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, my business top line 
in my last banking job. And remember all bankers, double count, triple count was let's say a billion dollars. If I would have gone to my boss, every banker has a boss and said, boss, give me seven years. And seven years later, my top line will be, you know, $10 million. He would have said, why don't you take two weeks off, right? You make $10 million a day. You're saying after seven, you'll make that much. So, so the size and scale is, is, is there, but, you know, we've made change, which we are very happy about. You know, it's been a good journey. It's been a journey which has had a lot of you know, time delays. Innovation is not easy. One thing I do say to fellow entrepreneurs is, and I'm Bengali, so it comes very naturally. Bengalis are really bad entrepreneurs, right? We have no, almost no good role models. Tell me a good Bengali entrepreneur. Right? I guess what, you know? Uh, like, come on, guys, you're so intelligent. People can't name one good Bengali entrepreneur. <laughs> there are there, there, there are plenty. We just, you know, they, they, you know, the, the good so ones don't come from the over, over No, it's not a nation. It's just, just, <laughs> just right. so, 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 you know, uh, if, if it, if you're from a community, it's self-deprecating, but you know, we're all into education and tell me Nobel prize winners from India or Bengali plenty, right? With names like Tagore, Banerjee, I could go on, you know, give me more time, right? But jokes, edit some of the anti-Bengali stuff. I'm Bengali, right? But, uh, you know, so it wasn't, tr don't try and be an entrepreneur for the sake of being an entrepreneur. If you are passionate about an idea, willing to put your own money, then go for it. Because you go through this personal hype, you know, this is so cool, not so cool. So the, the real thing is about the mission mm. and doing it rather than saying, oh, I want to be now an entrepreneur, mm. right? It's, it's hard work. It takes yeah. a long time. Yeah. You have to yeah. be bloody minded, persistent. Yeah. And maybe a little bit, how should I say politely, off skew. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you play less weekday rounds of golf as an entrepreneur than you do as a banker. You play weekday rounds of golf as a banker? Wow. Of course yeah, you have to. It's work. Uh -huh. Ronit, it's work. <laughs> right. Uh, one, one, last, one last question before we let Rahul you Rahul, stop. Go. Just uh, one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One yeah. last question. So it's 2030. We're all on the back on the rooftop or whatever that place is yes. called. Marina Bay Sands. What is Rahul Banerjee doing? Is he still running, building bond blocks? Is he, is he sailing his yacht around the world? Has he gone on to a new venture? Uh, no, what does I think, the world look like? What does the world look like in 2030? I think, I think uh, you know, don't, I, I don't, you know, uh, I don't sort of think about that. I think bondy value, if it's doing well, I'll be happy. I'd probably be teaching at a university, you know, in Singapore, right? Go back to what I was designed to do. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure with Garab to host you. See you. Until next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care.